Hi everyone, in this video you will learn how to do automatic chapter detection with Assembly AI's Speech-to-Text API. This is a brand new feature of our API and it works by breaking down audio or video content into logical chapters and then provides a summary for each chapter along with the corresponding start and end timestamps. This could be applied for example to YouTube videos, podcast episodes, TED Talks and basically any type of content you want. Now I will give you a quick overview of how this feature can be used and how the results look like and after that I'm going to show you step by step how you can write a Python script that automatically transcribes a YouTube video and then creates the chapters. If you're new here Assembly AI is a company that creates a state-of-the-art speech-to-text API and if you want to try it for yourself you can get your free API token using the link in the description below and now let's jump into it. Let's have a look at how we can use this new feature and if you're already familiar with the Assembly AI API then this is as easy as adding one new parameter to our request. So in this example I'm using a curl command and we send a post request to the transcript endpoint. Then of course we have to include our API token and the content type which is JSON and then here we specify the data. So here we put in the mp3 file name and now this is the new part. So here in order to use this feature you simply use this parameter auto chapters and set this to true. So if we leave this away and just put it like this, then we simply get the transcript back. So we convert the speech to text and then get the text back. And if we also include this auto chapters parameter, then we not only get the text, but also the automatically generated chapters. And that's basically all you need to do. And then the result will look something like this. So in this case, we get a JSON response. And then inside this JSON response, we find this field chapters. And then here for each chapter, we get something that looks like this. So we get a summary. Then we get a headline and the headline is basically a summary of this summary, so an even shorter version. And then we get a start and end timestamp in milliseconds. And yeah, that's how the result for the auto chapters looks like. And in this example, I tried this on another video on our channel that you can check out, which is about regularization. And this is the very first chapter in this video. And the summary is, overfitting is when your model really closely fits the training data. Regularization is a way to limit the flexibility that the model has in hopes to avoid overfitting. This video is part of the Deep Learning Explained series by Assembly AI. So yeah, I think this is pretty accurate. So you can watch the video and compare the result. And then the headline is, regularization is a way to limit the flexibility that the model has in hopes to avoid overfitting. And again, I think this is pretty accurate and this is an even shorter version of this. And yeah, so if we do this on the whole file, so then we get a JSON data that looks like this that we can save in a JSON file. So in this example, I tried this on another audio file. And in this case, I'm using a podcast episode from Joe Rogan. And here, so now we can see that this is the chapters field and then basically we get all the different chapters and for each chapter we get the summary the headline and then start and end and yeah that's how easy we can use this and now I want to show you step by step how we can code this in a python script and then upload our file get the transcript and also get the auto chapters so let's do this so let's create a Python script where we do all this step by step. So we automatically upload our file, then we do the transcription and then we get the response back. So we want to have the text and also the auto generated chapters. So let's do this. So first of all, let's do the imports we need. So we need to have requests. And if you don't have this, then you have to install this. So you can simply say pip install requests. Then we also want to use pretty print. So this is optional, but here I want to have a nicely formatted print. And then we also need JSON because we're going to work with JSON data. Then the next thing we need is of course a API key. So let's call this auth key. And in order to get this, of course you need to sign up to assembly AI. So you can do this for free. And then in your dashboard, you can find this API token here. So you can simply copy this and then we paste this in here and then we have this. 
And then in order to do all that we want, we need two endpoints. So we need the upload endpoint and the transcript endpoint. So we can find this at HTTPS and then api.assemblyai.com then slash the version. And then we have the upload and the transcript endpoint. Then we also need to have headers that we send with our uh, request. So we do one headers with only this authorization part. So here we put in our key. And then let's create another header where we also specify the content type. So here we have to say this is application JSON. And then let's also specify a chunk size to upload the data. So yeah, we use this number here in bytes and this is basically five megabytes. So we use this chunk size to upload the data. And now we need to create two, uh, sorry, three different functions. So let's create them. So we need one that we call upload. So for now, let's simply say pass. Then we need one that we call transcribe. And then we also need one and to get the result after transcribing is done. So let's call this Paul. And yeah, so now we need to implement these three. So let's start with the upload function. So this will get a file name as argument. So we put in a file name and then we want to create an inner function and we call this read file. And this also gets the same file name. And then in here, um, we open the file. So we say with open and then the file name. And we want to open this in RB mode. So read binary as F. And then we use a while true loop. And inside the loop, we say our data equals F so the file and then we can read and here we specify the chunk size. So each time we do this, we load five megabytes of our file and then we say if not data, then break. So this means basically we've reached the end and otherwise we simply yield the data. So this is our inner function. And then here we use this. So we now send our request. So we say upload response equals and then we use the requests module and we say requests dot and we want to send a post request to the upload endpoint. And then we also need to specify the headers. So we say headers equals and here we can use the headers auth only. And we also need to give it the data. So we say data equals and here we say read file, read file with the file name. So here we use this inner function that we just created because we only need this here. And this has to be outside. So like here. And then we get the response. So let's pretty print the upload response and we can convert this to JSON. So we say upload response dot JSON so that we see how this looks like. And then we also want to return the upload URL that is inside the JSON data. So we say return upload response dot JSON. And then here um, we access this field that is called upload um, URL. And yeah, that's all we need in order to upload a file. So let's actually already try this out. So down here we say if name equals equals and then this is underscore main. And if we are in our main process, then we want to upload a file. So for this, let's create a file name equals. And I already have one here, which is called Sam burns and then dash tab. So this is one of my favorite TED talks that you can find on YouTube, which is my philosophy of a happy life by Sam Burns. So I highly recommend that you check that out. 
and I already downloaded this as mp3 and so here I have the audio so I specify this here this is so the file name dot mp3 and then let's call the upload function with this file name and now let's run the script and see if this works but before we do this I just noticed I made one mistake so we have to say pretty print dot pretty print and now we should be good to go so let's run this all right, so this worked. So here we see we print the response. And in this case, we get a response with the field upload URL and then here the URL. So this is what we return from this function. And then here we could store this. So we say URL equals. And now I'm also going to hard code this. So I copy and paste this field into this. And now the next time I don't need to upload this again. So yeah, uploading works. So let's continue by implementing the transcribe function. So this will get one parameter that we call um, audio URL. So we say audio URL. So that's this URL. And we also give it one more parameter. So we give it the auto chapters parameter, which by default is false. And here we have to create one request. So we say transcript request equals, and this is a dictionary. And here we want to put in two fields. So the first one is the audio URL, and this is the audio URL. And then we also use this new parameter. So this is called auto underscore chapters. And then here we say um, as a string, this is true if the auto chapters parameter is true. And otherwise, so else we say as a string false. And now this is what we are going to send to the transcribe endpoint or transcript endpoint. So now let's say we get the response back. So we say transcript response equals and then we again use the requests module and send a post request to the in this case the transcript endpoint. Then we also send this request that we just created and this is a JSON format. So we say JSON equals this transcript request and of course we again have to use the headers. So in this case we use the headers that has the authorization and the content type. So after getting the response, let's again say pretty print dot pretty print. And then we can say the transcript response dot JSON. And again, I also want to return this here. So I say return and then transcript response dot JSON. And then let's only access the field ID. So you will see how this looks like in a second. And this is all that we need for the transcribe function. And now here we say we call this and then we store this in the in an ID. So we say transcript ID equals transcribe. And here the audio URL is this URL. And we also want to say auto chapters equals true. So let's run this and see if this works as well. And this is very quick. So we immediately get the response back. And here we find this ID field that we also return from this function. So in this case, again, I'm going to hard code this here and store this in this string. And so we only need this part. And then we can comment this out so we don't need to send this request again. And now we have the transcript ID. So this triggers the transcribing process on the assembly AI backend. And then after this is finished, the only thing we have to do is uh, retrieve the response. So we uh, implement this poll function. And this will get the transcript ID as parameter. And here first we um, create the 
polling endpoint and for this we need the transcript endpoint so we need the transcript endpoint plus and then as a string a slash and then plus this transcript id so now we send this so we say polling response equals and then we again use requests and again a post request oh sorry no in this case we need a get request so now we need a get and then we use the polling endpoint and again we have to send our headers so headers equals headers equals headers and now we can check this polling response and we can check the status field so we can say if polling response dot json and then we access the status status equals and then um we say we check if this equals equals completed then um, transcribing is complete. So now we can get the transcript, so the text, and also this field with the chapters. So let's create a new file and store this inside a file. So we say file name equals, and then let's use this transcript ID. And we also give it the ending.txt. Then we want to open this. So we say with open the file name. And then here we want to open it in write mode. So a W S F. And now we want to save the response. So the JSON response. And then only the text. So we can say F. So the file. And then we want to write the polling response dot json and then here only the field with the text and this is one thing we want to do and then we want to save the chapters in a separate file so now we overwrite this file name and say the file name equals again the transcript id plus and now here let's use as ending underscore chapters dot json so this should be a json file and then we do the same as here we open this as file in write mode and then here we include one more step so we say chapters equals polling response dot json and then here we access the field with the chapters and then we say um, not file dot write but here we say json dump um, and not as a string so we want to dump this as a file then here we want to put in the chapters then we need to specify the file and we also say indent equals four for a little bit of nicer formatting. And then let's also print um, and let's print transcript saved. And yeah, so that's all we need. So now let's also try this function and let's call the poll function with the transcript ID. And let's run this. And it worked. So it said transcript saved. And then we see we have two new files in the folder. So the text file and the JSON file. So let's open them and have a look at them. So this is the whole text. So the whole transcript of the audio file. And here let's have a look at the chapters. So here we have all the different chapters of this TED talk with the summary, the headline and start and end timestamp. And yeah, I think this is pretty cool. So yeah, and that's all you need to do to automatically do a transcription and then also get automatically generated chapters. So yeah, that's it. All right, so that's how easily you can create automatic chapters. And if you want to try it for yourself, you can get your free API token with the link in the description below. And if you like this video, then please hit the like button, comment and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.